Hello, my name is Kai Klopfer. I'm the founder and CEO here at Biofire. And I'm here today with Chirian, who just joined our team as VP of Manufacturing. I want to take a moment to sit down and reflect on our progress throughout 2025 to date and talk a little bit about what we're looking forward into 2026. I know it's been a little while since our last update, and we've been hard at work here at Biofire scaling manufacturing. We started shipping our very first units to customers late last year, and we've been hard at work ever since solving the hard technical and operation challenges that come with scaling a product like the Biofire Smart Gun. Well, most of the past couple years has been very, very focused on the engineering, the technology, the product itself. The 2025 has been much more focused on manufacturing operations. How do we take a high quality smart gun that we can build in very, very, very low volumes and at very high costs and scale that into a product that we can deliver to each and every one of you? This has been an exciting change of pace, right? Uh, going from solving technical challenges to solving operational challenges has required BioFire to change as an organization. And that's involved a couple different key pieces. The first being, how do we take the existing resources, our awesome team members, our physical infrastructure like this building, our equipment, and deploy those to a much broader set of challenges and use cases. It's required everybody here on the team to be very flexible. And I would say probably almost nobody at Biofire is actually doing the job that they were hired for, which is you know something I very much appreciate. And so overall, as this challenge has been uh, being kind of chipped away at throughout the year, it's been a shift, a crossroads, going from really being a pure R&D technology development company to being one that also runs a best-in-class manufacturing operation. And so, we understand uh, that this is gonna take investment, both investment in our existing resources, as well as investment in uh, what we look like growing into the future. And one of the, ch the investments that I personally am most excited about is Chirian joining the team here as VP of Manufacturing. Chirian, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Absolutely, Kay. Before we get into where it is that I came from, let me just identify why it is that I'm excited to be here. So. When I have joined any manufacturing organization or any organization writ large, I'm looking for three things. Number one, what's the nature of the operational challenge? And we're gonna get into that, which is a very direct response to what Kai just asked here. And it's big and it's audacious, but the good news is, is that the challenges that we face at BioFire are challenges that every manufacturing organization faces as they try to scale up from low rate initial production to volume production. Number two, what am I looking for, is what is the problem that the company is trying to solve? And there is a real problem that BioFire is addressing in a way that no other company in the United States is looking at. And it is not simply a building on additional platforms or updating mechanical technology to increase firearm safety, but a complete reimagining, obviously, of the smart gun itself to be able to address that very, very real firearm safety and firearms death issue that is plaguing the United States. Number three, do I like the team? And in the four months and change that I've been here, I can tell you that this team is more talented, more dedicated for its size and punches far above it, its weight than any team that I've had a chance or privilege to work on. So what is the nature of the challenge in front of us? I mentioned that it is not dissimilar from what other companies in consumer electronics, automotive, or aerospace, I just now gave my background, <laughs> have faced. And they fall into four broad categories. Those four broad categories are quality of supply, quantity of supply, capacity of the manufacturing line itself, and what I'll term DFX, design for assemblability and manufacturability, that X being a variable. Let's start with actually that second one, which is quantity of supply. What that means is we have to have high confidence that our supply base, regardless of where they are, can get us the parts that we need on time and in full to be able to support what the demand is, which then allows us to support what our production plan to meet that demand is. Number two is quality of supply. We need to be able to be very, very sure that our supply base can give us conforming material that we have confidence is going to do the thing that we need it to do. It performs in conformance with our specifications and our drawings before it ever leaves the supplier, such that when it is now integrated on this production line or a future production line, 
into top level assemblies, the smart gun, that smart gun is going to work first time and every single time. Number three, we talked about design for X, design for assemblability and manufacturability, and that is a joint manufacturing and engineering enterprise that makes sure that the design is straightforward enough that our supply base, with a minimum of industrialization, can routinely build what it is that we're asking them to build, again, in our specifications and our drawings. And number two, our own work instructions lay out an assembly process on our manufacturing line that is simple, that we can start transitioning away from high-skilled aerospace employees like we have right behind us to people who can assemble our smart gun using a fairly straightforward playbook over and over again, quickly and repeatably. Last, but certainly not least, is the capacity on the line. We have, as I mentioned before, a low-rate production line, and we need to scale that into a volume production line. First, a single volume production line, then multiple volume production lines to be able to hit the production rates on a daily or weekly basis that we want to, to be able to not only fulfill the order book that we have, but to fulfill future orders as well, post 2026. In answer your question, Kai, it was actually four and not one. <laughs> no, absolutely. Well, I, it's certainly not something to complain about. Um, let's talk about one of the things that I personally am most excited about. Uh, I think that will help to enable many of the different aspects that you just talked about, which is Armory One. Uh, as obviously you talked about, we have our, our low volume production line here today. We're going to continue to increase and optimize this uh, as sort of a, a prototyping engineering optimization side. But clearly, we're not going to be able to fulfill thousands and thousands of orders out of this current facility. Uh, and so Biofar is going to be moving into Armory One early next year. Uh, tell us a little bit about that. How do you see that helping support those objectives, helping us solve problems, uh, and to help fulfill you know, all the orders that we're looking to fulfill here? Yeah, for sure. Um, I've used the term before in some of our discussions, lily pad Kai, and what we're going to be able to do is take the lessons learned from the line that we see behind us here and lily pad into Armory One to be able to create not just one volume production line, but multiple volume production lines that are running in parallel. So let's dig into a little bit of detail here. We are actually in the process of redoing our production line here to be able to squeeze as much capacity out of the building that we are sitting in right now. What does that do for us? It does two things. The first is that it proves out what it is that our run rate can be within the confines of a very, very small footprint like this. And if we can get to the volume of production, not volume production, that we believe that our industrial engineering models are telling us, then what it is that we can do is start to replicate those lines one, two, three, four at a time in order to start increasing the daily and weekly volume of guns that we're building. But there's actually an optimization piece that we are going to be looking at simultaneously. And that optimization piece is, we are not looking to simply replicate the line that we can fit in this building at its current capacity, but increasing its capacity by touching on that design for X that we spoke about a few minutes ago to be able to make simpler and therefore make faster the build and the faster that we can build in a simple manner and with consistent quality, the more guns that we can get out. So let's just call that crossing curves. One curve going up, the number of lines that we're building, the other curve that's coming down is let's just call it the complexity of the build as demonstrated by how long it takes us to build any one particular gun. The cycle time build on each gun should come down and will come down. Therefore, the lines that we replicate can build more guns. Can answer your question? Absolutely. Cool. Awesome. Thanks, Jurian. Really appreciate you giving us an overview on uh, manufacturing operations, what these challenges look like moving forward here. I I'd like to take a bit of a, a zoom out now and talk about what the rest of this year going into 2026 is going to look like. First and foremost, super excited to announce that we expect to be fulfilling all customer orders that are currently placed no later than the end of 2026. So this is something that we're really excited about. We've got firm fixed plans. Uh, it's in our manufacturing ramp plan. And this is something that uh, we've been working towards for me for about 14 years now, uh, and for many of the team for many, many years. While we've been focused on the technical side, uh, scaling that, moving now into the uh, manufacturing operation side, we wanna uphold the same promise that we've always made, which is that we're gonna do this right. 
We're gonna take a diligent approach. We're gonna build a high quality smart gun that actually delivers on the fundamental promise. And we're gonna do that in a way that's different than any other firearms company ever has been uh, in the past. In particular, this extends not just to the technical side of the product, but also to how we think about the experience of owning and receiving and buying a Biofire smart gun. As a result, we've gotten a lot of questions from folks like yourself on when we're gonna be reaching out to ask to finalize orders, uh, when you're gonna have a chance to put your final payment down, make your final configuration. And our answer on that is we're gonna be reaching out to you only when we're about to start manufacturing your unit. We don't wanna reach out to you far in advance, uh, ask you for a full payment before your order's in the manufacturing queue, or otherwise reach too far out. And additionally, beyond just the manufacturing operations, which is of course our primary focus and what we've talked about today, we are also scaling many other parts of the organization and what that takes to deliver a very, very high quality customer experience, a high quality customer support experience uh, is also part of that. And so we'll be reaching out as your order gets closer to the front of the manufacturing queue, again, with the objective and the current plan of fulfilling all customer orders throughout 2026. I just want to say thank you. Thank you for the patience, for your support, uh, for your investment in BioFire. Uh, in many ways, you are what makes this possible. And I'm very, very excited to be getting these out here uh, over the next 12 to 18 months. Thank you.